Joining us now with more, two people who will play a very important role in the upcoming trial, including the author of A Case Against Removing Trump, Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz, former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi. Uh, good to see you both. Pam Bondi, let's start with you. Let's get a preview, if we can, of what you see, how this all goes down when it begins on Tuesday. Well, Sean, and it's an honor to work with all of these great people. And I can tell you, Pat Cipollone, Jay Sekulow, they were ready to go a month ago. They're ready to go last week. They're ready to go today and next week. We're ready to get this behind us. Because as you said, the president has done absolutely nothing wrong. If they had articles of impeachment that allege crimes, they should have been presented in the House. If the president was a clear and present danger, really, that should have been sent over prior, way prior to Christmas. Remember Pelosi's comments. Yet they held it because they have nothing and they still have nothing. So what we're going to have here, Sean, is a fair trial. And we're very excited to put this behind the president, um, get this behind him as soon as possible because he did nothing wrong. They have sent over the flimsiest of flimsy evidence, if you can even call it that. And so I think this is going to go very quick. Um, and I think it's going to be put behind the president because, as you said, while he's signing the China deal, one of the greatest deals in, in, our, in our lifetime with China, what's she doing? Signing the impeachment articles and giving out ceremonial pins? That's shameful. That's nothing. Trying to impeach a president should not be a, a day of joy and celebration. It's, it should be somber and and frankly, it's shameful for all of them. Uh, Professor Thurschwitz, I know you're going to do with the con deal with the constitutionality of this. The Constitution is clear about the specific role that it, it's solely in the House's power, their realm, to impeach. They've done that. Now they have House managers chosen. They will present their case. Trials to be held in the Senate. We have the presiding judge will be the Supreme Court Chief Justice, John Roberts. Question is, why do some Republicans want to somehow do the House's job if they didn't do a good job, which we know they didn't do a good job, and this is a nothing case. Well, my job uh, next week will be to present the constitutional case against impeachment, a case that I've been presenting on your show in two books and 25 articles. I will not deal with the nitty-gritty of the facts and whether there should be witnesses or not, but just from a personal point of view, the Constitution approach, which was suggested in prior impeachments, impeachments was always to have the um, facts presented to the House of Representatives, cross-examination, uh, you then get a report, and the report is what's put on trial. The one thing that's critically clear is that if the Democrats are allowed to call witnesses, President Trump's lawyers will have to be allowed to call witnesses, and they're going to determine initially whether the witnesses are relevant. On CNN all day, they've been saying today that Hunter Biden wouldn't be relevant, but of course he'd be relevant if witnesses were called, because the issue is, was he corrupt? Did the president legitimately have an interest in ferreting out corruption, including the corruption of Hunter Biden? So I think if the Democrats begin to open the door, they will regret it. Also, it will put the trial off for months, maybe even longer than that, because they're going to call Bolton. Bolton will want to testify, the president will invoke executive privilege, and then the Senate will have to take that case to court. And the court will have to decide, either on a blanket way or question-by-question question way, whether or not Bolton has the right to answer these questions. Remember, he doesn't get to make the decision. It's made by the president in the first instance, and then the courts. Okay, so John Bolton says, well, it's, it, it's the president's executive privilege. He gets right. to invoke it. president said he will invoke it. By the way, That's like right. all prior presidents have, and you know all the instances in the, Ob in the Obama years. So the question is, and he says, well, I want to testify anyway. That would then have to be litigated separately, Professor? Absolutely. Now, there are two ways you can litigate it. One, you can make a motion to the chief justice. I think he would defer to the Senate. And then the issue, if the Senate votes, they will probably agree that it's executive privilege, then the Senate probably could take it to the courts and seek to have a redetermination in the courts. But it would take forever. Remember, the Democrats said the reason they didn't bring the Bolton subpoena to the courts is it would take too much time. Now they want to do it again, which will take even more time and postpone the Senate trial for possibly months until they get a definitive decision from the United States Supreme Court. So they're trying to have it both ways. 
Pam, where do you weigh in on the witness issue uh, and the executive privilege issue? Because those are now front and center. And I do agree with the professor. There's got to be reciprocity here. Uh, we're going to have witnesses. I'd like to hear from the congenital liar, Adam Schiff. I think he's compromised in this case. Mm -hmm. I would like to hear from Hunter the Biden. non Hunter Biden. How, uh, do you know any company in Florida when you were attorney general that paid people millions of dollars that had absolutely zero experience? I've never I've never Absolute, heard that. No. Professor Dershowitz Durs never got experience. me that gig. <laughs> Absolutely zero experience, Sean. And, you know, Professor Dershowitz is, of course, right on this. First of all, this should have been handled in the House. It wasn't. They punted. They want the Senate to do their dirty work. Now they can't get a redo, and that's what they're trying to get in the U.S. Senate. But, you know, executive privilege is very important, not only for President Trump, but for every future president. Can you sure. imagine if that got waived for every future president with national security issues, that, that that just could be said and talked about all the time? It would be horrible for our country for, for centuries to come. So I doubt that's going to happen. If it does, though, and, and if they want witnesses, bring it on because we're going to have plenty of witnesses to call. If they well, want the witnesses, reason, we're going to have them too. The reason Professor. I agreed to do this over the great objection of some of my family members and many, many friends, uh, one of my relatives today wrote to me and said, would you please change your last name? Uh, the reason that I agreed I to do Alan this Hannity is because... I think Alan sounds pretty good. You uh, could take okay. mine. <laughs> the reason is because I'm concerned about future presidents. This will weaken the presidency yeah. if this is a precedent. It will make impeachment a weaponized tactic to be used any time a president who's controversial faces a house that has a majority on the other side. That's not what the framers had in mind. And I will lay out the debates over the Constitutional Convention, lay out what happened, why the framers picked these four words, treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors, four concepts. And hopefully my goal is to persuade some Democrats. I'm a Democrat. I want to persuade some Democrats that this is not an impeachable offense and have them vote uh, not to impeach, not to remove the president. All right. Professor Dershowitz, former Attorney General Pam Bondi, thank you both.